Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sensibly Cynical Podcast. My name is Sean, and today's guest is Turner. He is an amazing pop singer out of Nashville, Tennessee. So stoked to have him on The Come Up today, which is my new interview series where I talk to these determined, hardworking artists that are scratching and clawing their way to the top. Turner talks about his new single, IDC, which was released April 22nd, how he started in the music industry, and much more. So, ladies and gentlemen, Turner. All right, joining me now, he is a pop artist out of Nashville, Tennessee, by way of St. Louis, Missouri. Turner, what's up, man? What's up? How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. So, uh, talk about your journey through music. Yeah, so I... um... I started music kind of at an early age. Um, My dad uh, has a video of him getting a drum set for me when I was like four or five. Um, I did not take, take it up very well then, but, um, but in middle school, I kind of started on guitar and just kind of figured some things out. But, um, and I went to school for music. Uh, I went to Olivet Nazarene university. It's a university just South of Chicago. Um, And through that, I was able to do a program called CMC down in Nashville, which is why I ended up here of all places um mm. and uh through that i just kind of was able to experience being an artist i had always done music i kind of played guitar and did some comp- composition in uh uh in college but i just i hadn't been on the performing side of things i kind of did behind the scenes mm. stuff writing some songs with some people um and so through that program i was able to perform on stage and realized that uh, performing and being an artist was kind of what i wanted to do um, and that happened at the end of 2019. So 2020 was kind of my first year um, right. as an artist, kind of figuring stuff out. And so, yeah. And so now this year is kind of the big year of releases. So that's awesome. Yeah. Just, uh, you're the second interview here on, on the come up. And that's kind of why I started this series is to give the artists that are just on the rise, you know, or on the come up the guy, people that deserve platforms. And I feel like you deserve it. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, giving a platform to, you know, those of us that are on the come up, as you said. Yeah, yeah. So uh, who's your inspiration musically? Like, who's the artist or artist that you're like, all right, I want to do what they do. I don't care how it gets done. I want to do what they do. Who who do who was like yeah. your go to? So uh, right now, I think that one of the biggest influences for me is John Bellion um and his music um he has you know kind of this philosophy that he talks about about not wanting to be um boxed into a genre and so while i do pop my goal is to always kind of be uh, innovating and doing mixing different genres together doing different things and not staying in the, in one lane and so so like on on my uh ap no mercy coming up you know we have a hip hop like rap song and then we kind of have you know some elements of rock and some of the other songs and so mm. just kind of trying to mix those different elements um but some other some other influences would be um Bastille um mm-hmm. I love Bastille they're they're a huge influence and then this uh alternative group uh, I don't know if you've heard of them or not but Amber Run uh, uh I think vaguely like okay, I've heard the say, name I've heard the name I would say they're not they're not super big um but yeah. it's this alternative group out of UK mm-hmm. um and they just some of the guitar tones and stuff that they have um their music is just kind of like perfect for like my dream guitar tone and sound and everything so um mm-hmm. so I kind of get a lot of guitar influence from them Yeah I heard one lyric of the song I don't care uh what you think is that is that you, you uh correct me if I'm wrong but is that a lyric based on like standing up for what you believe in and doing what you think is right yeah, yeah. So, so the whole song is about um, kind of standing up to these people in your life that maybe don't believe in you um, or don't want you, you know, to to succeed or do what you you know want to pursue. Um, and so that's I don't care what you think. It's just kind of you know I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do me. You know I, I don't care if you don't like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> stay in my lane and keep going. Yeah, yeah. So what do you see like the future? What do you think the future like is? Are you looking to? Um, stay in a lane of like a genre music expand like talk about five years down the line i know it's hard to predict but what do you see yourself doing in the future yeah so um as far as the future just you know keep keeping on my my track and releasing you know all the the music i've got a lot of Mm -hmm. plans for this year um between this ep no mercy and then i have another ep plan for the fall um so just kind of doing um, doing that and then see, seeing where this goes and kind of figuring out yeah. from there. I've interviewed a few people from Nashville. I think that's how we got the connection from your PR. But uh, I asked this to 
how was her name? Elise or no, Megan Nadine. I think I asked this question okay. too. And I'm still kind of, I don't know if you've heard of her. She's awesome. But uh, what's it like living in Nashville when and you're not particularly country music? So what's your thoughts on the country <laughs> scene uh, in Nashville? What's your thoughts on all that? Uh, yeah. So the, so the country scene is definitely, uh, definitely prevalent, obviously here than um, some other places and being a pop artist in that realm is um, a journey for sure. Um, but it's, it's also really cool because I feel like, um, I'm able to stand out a little bit because, you know, most people are here doing country music or a different kind of genre of music. Um, and I'm also, I feel like I have a lot of connections because of that. Like, I feel like all the pop people in the area kind of get connected and, you know, hang out yeah. and kind of enter in the same circle. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely, definitely a, a interesting experience, but I will say like sitting at the writer's round or sitting, you know, at um, different mm -hmm places around town you'll hear country music but then you hear that one pop artist come up and you're like hey we got, we got some representation yeah. <laughs> yeah you should listen to megan nadine have you heard of her uh, i think i've heard the name but I've, she's I've, really I've, good check her out yeah she's i'll really definitely good. check her out like just the voices are like stunning like her voice is just like oh my god megan um nadine. and she was kind of saying similar things how that's kind of uh she respects it you know what i mean yeah. I, I was just curious because that's got to be interesting a lifestyle there you know yeah, for sure. It's it's definitely um, definitely different because you know a lot of a lot of the sounds that we're you know working with and kind of just mm -hmm. the genre as a whole is different than what a lot of other people are doing. Um, mm -hmm. But it's exciting in that regard, just because um, you know we get to add a little bit of a variety to the you know mm -hmm. the local scene. So talk about how you um, your childhood, man. Like you grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Am I right? Yeah. 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 How uh cardinals fan what was it like in st oh, louis all oh, i yeah. know is cardinals and <laughs> beer that's all i know yeah that's i mean that's basically all you need to know um but yeah any anyone in the area whether they like baseball or not or a cardinals fan um that's just a staple of, of living in st louis and then uh the other thing is we have our own like most people don't know but we have our own style of pizza uh, really i like it most people don't it's like uh, what is it it's like thin crust but like the thinnest crust that you can get so it's like like cracker thin um, oh, and then we yeah. have our own like type of cheese or whatever um like square yeah. cut kind of thin crust pizza but it is uh most people don't like it but <laughs> and what's also funny is um when you said you mentioned chicago in your intro i'm like those are rivals too so i thought it was funny. oh yeah i thought oh, yeah, that was it funny was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah moving like, moving, moving, moving up there for... Lewis talking about chicago this is awesome yeah no moving up there for school was definitely uh an experience uh i would i was outnumbered as far yeah. as baseball fans and everything my else, family's so. the same way like i have some families some of my family are like cardinal fans and some of my mm -hmm. family are uh cup fans so yeah. I'm one of the my yep. family has, right, in the is like right down the middle, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's classic. Yeah, well, you pick it, one, you pick one. Yeah, it was funny because I I, uh, I had a friend in, in high school. I grew up with a good friend of mine that we ended up going to the same college, mm. uh, but his family was Cubs fans. And so mm. we growing up in St. Louis, like he was always having to deal with it. And then we, we both went to school and I was like, oh, man, tables have turned. <laughs> yeah, they're both red, but there's one that has a little blue, you know, yeah. it's like, well, <laughs> it's like, well, um, do you have any like um aspirations i guess um outside of music like what what do you do for fun man up there yeah so we um you know me uh, i'm married uh me and my wife like to go on like walks and just kind of hang out uh -huh. um big I, I i'd like to be more of an h person than i am um i have allergies so the outdoor doesn't particularly like me oh um, <laughs> <laughs> but um but also uh one, one thing i'm trying to get into more um is videography like we're I, i'm doing some like a mini film series kind of with this ep i'm um, gonna we'll be shooting some videos with that and so um i'm super excited to do that but then just kind of potentially looking at doing some directing and like filming for some mm -hmm. other artists and other people in the area so i'm excited to kind of try that uh aspect out as part of part of my journey so yeah that's cool i saw you know, I read that you've been working on this song um, since 2019. That's three. It's a three year journey. Yeah. So yeah. What's going, yeah. What was going on there? What was the I guess what started the whole journey? Yeah. So uh, 2019 was um, kind of the inspiration for this song. Um, I was just getting started as like an artist, kind of started my performing career and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was going on stage and I had someone uh, pull me aside and like, are you really going to go on stage and rap like what are you doing? Um, and it just, it kind of hit me. And so that's kind of where the inspiration came. I was like, okay, I, I can't let these other people, you know, dictate my life, tell me what to do. 
Um, mm. Especially, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. And so, um, right. so th- this is kind of me, you know, overcome, overcoming that. And so mm. um, we kind of wrote this song. Um, I co-wrote it with someone else um, that year. But then 2020, like we got, got into 2020, I was kind of starting to work on it. But then the COVID happened, obviously, and kind of changed some plans. Um, and then when I got to Tennessee, I met up with the producer I'm working with now, Chris Bensfield. Um, I, I met with him and I was like, okay, let's let's kind of bring this one back. I think it'll be a good one, especially for No Mercy, um, the EP. I think it's going to fit well on there. Um, and so we kind of just took it back through this process, revamped it. And I was able to work with a lot of a lot of friends on this. I had someone come in for the guitar and like bass. And so this was mm-hmm. really a, like a collaborative song for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I asked this to the first person, Haley Wild. Um, mm-hmm. She was the first person on uh, the series. What's your thoughts on uh, remixes versus original songs? Like, yeah. Want- so, um, so like, like, it, like, which is better? Or yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Like, like, what's your opinion? Okay. Like, which one do you prefer? Uh, I think <laughs> I think it depends on, on the you know the instance or whatever. Um, I think I've seen some uh, really cool remixes um done there's this uh i think one of actually one of my favorite remixes um is from uh i think it was k flay remixed uh, uh imagine dragon song mm-hmm. i can't i think it was thunder or one of anyways i i she just or they added a cool like verse to it and like this rap part and i just thought it was a really cool right. like addition to the song and a way to look at it so i think um i think it's an interesting way you know to express your art and look at it as long as it's you know flavorful i don't i don't mind remixes um yeah so. what's cool about technology nowadays and remixes is people from like different countries are remixing yeah songs <laughs> like like uh like peru have you heard that song i was asking Haley about it have you heard uh, peru I, I have not heard that song but i did i did listen i did listen to the podcast earlier, oh i did uh, I appreciate week, so that. i saw i saw <laughs> did you I look it up that. did you look it up uh, no, no, I, I I haven't looked it up yet, but I, I definitely will. Um, no, I'm just, my point is, is that I find it interesting how, you know, it doesn't matter if you know them personally or not. If you hear a song, you can hear a song from like a different country and be like, all right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, well, and I think, I think it, um, you know, there's, there's a couple people that I feel like have been discovered doing, um, kind of doing mm-hmm. some remixes and that, that's how they break into it. So I think it's a cool, um, yeah, cool avenue to explore for sure. So mm. I'd be honored if someone remixed my song. I, I, I think it would be cool. So. Well, maybe, maybe it's it's gonna happen, Turner. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, how'd the name? how the name come across? How'd you? Yeah. So, um, so when I was starting my artist career, you know, I wanted. Um, I I started. My, most of my music doesn't have this sound, but I kind of started with um, an NF vibe. It was much more rap than it was anything else. Um, and so I was looking for my stage name. You know what I was gonna use. Um, and so Turner is actually my mom's maiden name and, um, and my grand- grandfather passed away uh, a couple of years ago. And so I, I wanted to use this as a way to kind of honor him and to, um, you know, have this kind of stage name. And I, I just took the U and the E out just to kind of make it a little bit more appealing, I guess. Um, mm. But, um, but yeah, it's just um, kind of a name that I was looking for myself and wanted to honor the family if I could and, you know, use it that way. So mm-hmm. as someone who's starting out in the industry, would do you have any advice for people that have decided like last week or last month that they're going to start? I think the biggest thing is to um, just keep at it. Like, you know, don't it, there's, you're going to have some discouraging days for sure. Um, but that comes, you know, that comes with any, any dream or pursuit. So like keep at it for sure. Don't let the negativity keep you down and um you know, just work at it day by day and take it one step at a time. Yeah, I hear you. What's the hardest part about all this whole process? Is um, like- I I I think the hardest part is um, just getting. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, I th- I think the hardest part is just feeling like um, you're not where um, you want to be. I think there are days where you have the vision, um, but you're just not to to that place yet. Um, and getting other people to see your vision. Because I feel like as creatives, kind of we have this idea, this story, this, um, you know, thing that we want to say to the world. Um, but just getting other people to uh, kind of come along that journey, especially starting out. I mean, once you get there, it's fine. But um, if that makes if does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It's building. It's kind of similar with <laughs> podcasting. Is like yeah. you'll, have a, you'll have a vision in your in your head, but it's getting that listenership, you know, 
Yeah, to, to like engage my, and to see see the right, whole picture of what's right, going on. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Because it may be entertaining to you and to other people, but there's something about traction and yeah. and everything like that that's kind of hard at times because you know if if the right person hears it, then you can go like this. But if the right person doesn't hear it, then it'll be like this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Up down. Yeah. And um. And for me, like, there's so much, um, like, intentionality put into, like, every lyric or every song or, like, especially with these videos, like, we're doing, uh, like, there's a lot of, like, little objects or little things that are going to represent something. And so just hoping that mm -hmm. um, the audience and other people are able to pick up on all those little details, mm -hmm. you know. So. What's your, what's, what's your, like, um, thoughts on people who use auto-tune, like, uh, solely auto-tune, like, not, yeah. with, you know what I mean? Like, there's some people that rely heavy on it do you do you like a good mix of both um or what's your I thoughts on all that i don't love heavy auto tune uh it's just never been my favorite uh sound i guess mm -hmm. um it, it, it is i i understand the uh, artistic you know design behind it it's just not my cup of tea um but i i i see a place for auto tune here and there like i understand how people use it but it's just not it's not mm. something that I want to use um, for for <laughs> yeah. for my music. I like yeah. a good, clean vocal sound. Um, but but yeah. It, it, yeah, to each their own. It's my it's yeah my yeah, yeah exactly exactly. <laughs> you'll you'll hear some like I'm like I'm a uh, I'm kind of weird like that. Like I I like uh, I like EDM music. Okay okay. It's kind of like auto tune. So I um are you you've heard some edm stuff like san holo and marshmallow and yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah no I've, I've heard a lot of marshmallow yeah i'm into that sort of stuff so i've kind of like a gotcha and that's all computer that's all computer graphic yeah you know eq yeah well and, and like i said like it's it's not i don't have any like oh wow they're not a real artist because they're using <laughs> auto tune. like that's not sometimes that's, not, that's harder just, sometimes that's harder than regular yeah. <laughs> stuff yeah is getting the pitch the pitch uh, sound right. Yeah, and making sure it doesn't because because with auto tune you have a lot more, um, or at least I feel like you have a lot more uh, potential clash with like other instruments or other things going on. So being able to um, kind of do that well and get it in the mix well mm -hmm. and everything is just it's impressive for sure. Yeah, man. So talk about No Mercy. Like when's the rollout? Talk about when it's getting released. Promotional. Yeah. So so No Mercy is coming out um, at the end of May. Um, I think, mm -hmm. I think May 27th is, I, sh I should know the date, but I don't, I think May something 27th like is the that. May something. Yeah, so, so, something like that. Um, and so, uh, so I'm super pumped about that. We'll probably be um, releasing some uh, like sneak previews or whatever in the next couple of mm -hmm. weeks. I'm um, just kind of leading up to that, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be five songs. Um, the whole theme of the EP is about uh, confronting like these external voices Um whether that's, you know, negativity from someone who doesn't believe in you, um, expectations maybe, you know, of your parents or, you know, mm. of authority figures in your life or whatever, um, or, yeah. you know, relationships you have with, with other people. It's, it's just kind of focused on uh, these external voices and confronting them. Cause I know as a people pleaser, like this, this has kind of been my EP to be like, okay, like I'm going to not care about what other people think. I'm just going to make my own decision and not, you know, just do something because that's what people expect me to do. Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of the whole whole message of the EP. And then after that, I'm this summer we're releasing uh, like a short video to go, like I was saying, that mini film series, short video with each song to kind of help tell the story. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, checking it out. I have a lot of respect for artists uh, nowadays because especially in the social media era, everyone everyone's criticized every second on Twitter and TikTok. Yeah. So people that put themselves out there, I have a lot of respect for you included. I like your stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And, yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, it's definitely a step to um, put put something put something out, put something from the heart the ether, out. For, yeah, to the yeah <laughs> the universe, so to speak. Yeah, man, this has been fun. Where can people find uh, you on social media? Yeah, so I am uh, at the Real Turner, um, and that's T R N R um, for anyone who's listening. And uh, that's at Instagram, at TikTok. I think I have a Twitter. I it's been like over a year since I've tweeted. Um, <laughs> there's yeah. a Facebook page you can check out, and then on Spotify and Apple Music anywhere, it's just Turner T R N R. Before you go, do you got a funny story uh, you can share about your time in uh, Nashville? 
Yeah, Maybe. so um, let me think. <laughs> you, you can edit this, right? Oh, yeah. No? Okay, oh, sorry, I can sorry. Edit. I can edit it, yeah. You got <laughs> I'm just trying story. to, I'm, I'm going to say, give me a second hey, to think Hey, you can go explicit sure if you want. I don't care. <laughs> just any story, any story will work. Um, so, so, okay, so this isn't, this isn't that funny. It's just one of the only things I can think. You put me on the spot. Um, hmm. I'm thinking um, we went to, so, okay, so this is kind of natural related. So I had a friend um, that I met at college through like a program or whatever. Um, and forever ago, I had went to this program called like Camp Electric, whatever. It's just a music program kind of for people who are getting into that. Um, and so we met and we became really great friends um, in college and kind of hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, and through that, uh, we found out that we actually met seven or eight years before what? at Camp Electric. <laughs> and we awesome. had this weird experience about like, I don't know, our, our, our meeting was him bringing a, a pound of bacon on a plate to <laughs> sit down at breakfast. Mm. So that was our first interaction. But yeah, anyways. Um, it's like, yeah, you look, you look familiar. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I feel like we knew each other before. So he was like, oh, wait, were you at this camp? I was like, yeah, I was at that. Were you at that camp? He's like, yeah. And in this place, I was like, yes. What? I've done that like too, like um, like I'll be on like social media or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you ever heard of Meetup Turner? You know Meetup? Yeah, is? yeah, yeah. I'll be like that where. So I got a funny story too. I know it's about you, but yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you tell, tell your something. story. Tell your story. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So this is good. So um, I was talking to this first. I was talking to this girl on like uh, eHarmony. Everyone knows what okay. eHarmony is. Yeah. And uh, she kind of like she kind of just ghosted me. But then I saw her part of a meetup. <laughs> it, it was like, it, you know, meetup is like a group of like yeah, people yeah, that yeah. go to an event. And she was like, she was like looking at me sideways. I mean, like, what do you mean? You're the one that, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't give a crap. You're the one that ghosted me. Yeah. Like, why are you feeling away? And then she's being all awkward because you guys <laughs> showed up in the same place. Hey, you're the one that did that shit, not me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's funny. funny. It's funny. This has been awesome. I, I so appreciate your time uh, this evening. It's been good. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on here. It's been it's been great. And great um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, social media um, wins everything you ramping up promotional wise or everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, um, you know, I'll be doing some previews and stuff. And then um, we're, you know, pr promoting the heck out of the ZP coming up. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. So, all right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. See you. See you. Have a good one. You too. There you go. Another episode of the Sensibly Cynical podcast in the books. Check us out on Twitter at Cynical Sensibly Instagram, Sensibly Cynical Pod, and check out our Facebook page. Also, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We are on WordPress. And, of course, Sensibly Cynical coffee mugs are available on our bonfire, which the link is in our bio. That's it. Please stay safe and take care.